I want to show you how easy it is to make Animate CC work together with a database. I'm using this database called Firebase, which Google bought a couple of years ago. It's for free and it works great. Uh, I'm done playing around with PHP. <laughs> this is great. This works for me. Uh, the flip side of the coin is that it is for free, but if you have a lot of users or use a lot of data, you need to pay Google for this service. But it works fine that in the way that you log into Firebase.com and set up your database. You need a Google account. And after you have made your account, you can make a web app, an Android app on an iOS app. And I'm making an web app as we're using JavaScript in Animate CC. I'll call it my database, very original. And we have a lot of code that I'll use in a second. I'll continue to consult. And here, under build and under real time database, you press create database, which will set up the database for us. So there are a few steps here. I press start and test mode. And it says anyone will be able to edit and delete the database within 30 days. And that's fine by me. I'm actually making this even worse because here under build and real time, time database under rules, I will change this text into true and the line below also into true, which will make everyone able to uh, delete or edit my database <laughs> and that's okay by me we're only using this for fun games games it says here anyone can still modify it and delete your data <clears throat> you should not put vital or important stuff in here so here on the data this is where you'll see where we store the information here in a second and if I press project overview and press my database and the gear uh, below here, here is the code that I need to put into Animate CC. First, we need to copy the link to the database here without the script tags there. Back in Animate CC, this is not an empty uh, template. I have a general button over here. It's nothing fancy, just an input field and a dynamic text with a text inside so I can put. Uh, information in there and I have prepared code for us that I will go through here in a second but under global and include we can press the plus sign there and we can add from URL and here I paste in the URL I just copied but this is wrong this took me quite a while to understand what is wrong you need to delete the app at the end so it ends with firebase.js now it will work. I don't know why it is <laughs> the link that Google gives us is wrong, but this will work. Okay, back in the code. Um, the post uh, to the database I'll paste there in, in a second. At the top here we have a couple of things, winner, high score database, whatnot. But in the init function here I have a container from create.js. This is where I always I always make a container and put my graphics in there so I can manipulate it. Then we have the upload button, the general button underscore over there from the library that I'll add to the container. Uh, and the button I'll add to the stage with this x and y value and I have an event listener attached to the button. When I click the button it will upload data. That's what the button does. It will upload data and the function there is below somewhere. There it is upload data. But at first I need to connect to the database. And the code I'll paste in here. Let's go back to Fireplace. Firebase. <laughs> I press project overview, my database and the gear. And below here is the code that we need. We were there before, right? This is the code that you need to copy, not the last line there, the analytics, <clears throat> just this part. All this I'll copy and back into actions I'll paste it in and there 
it is and I'll align it so it looks pretty and there it is and you can see there are a lot of things in here there are keys and IDs and things that you should not give away this easily as I'm doing here people will be able to delete and mess around with your database and I'll delete my database after this so you cannot <laughs> mess around with mine <laughs> But here you can see the last line there, you have the Firebase Initialize app and it will connect to the Firebase online. And at the top there, Firebase, I have, I want to get hold of this uh, database. So I have a global variable called database and it will make a Firebase database. So I have my own <laughs> variable there in the computer database. Um, and the command there is database star parentheses and parentheses and um, down here the upload data that is the one that will fire when you press the button and maybe actually now it's time to show you what it actually does so <laughs> let's run the code and see <laughs> so this is the button here and uh, let's open up the console and here it says that Firebase JavaScript software development kit. You should only import as much as you need. I don't care about that. I'll press the send data and it will send data to uh, the database. Here you can see it over here. Loop through all the data. Sorry about the tape typo. There's a, ty a score of 47 and it says that the data is saved. If I go back into Firebase and real time database, here I have the header there of all the scores and here I have a unique ID and it says level and name and total. These are the three things that I put into the data database that I will show you in a second. So each time I press the button a number is sent to the database. Now again it loops through all the database. Now we have 47 and 77. I can press again. Now I have three entries and that is 47, uh, 40, 47, 77 and 20 and if I go back into Firebase I can open up these and you can see here they all are 47, 77 and 20. The level of name stays the same, I was too lazy to change that but let me show, let me show you the code again. So each time the button is pressed this upload data will fire. Here we have a reference the reference is important. This is where you link into the database. So it links into the header of the database. You can link deeper into the database if you want to, but I want to link to the highest level uh, to all the scores. And then I have a variable called all scores. It will take the database that I made and then it will reference this all scores. So we'll point there to all the scores. And now let's try to upload something into the database. So I've made a data that consists of three things. Name, level, of total. And total is just a random number between 0 and 100. Just so I can see something different each time I press the button. The name and the level stays the same. And this line here is important. This is where it's been sent actually to the database. So all scores, which was the database that I had up there. Now we push the data. We send the data to the database. I can put an end parentheses after data and it will work fine. It will just send the data to the database. But I have a second argument finished because when you work with databases things doesn't happen instantly like when you're on a computer. Packages might be lost or if you're on a bad connection it might take more time so we need to check always that what we have done on the uh, database actually happened. So here I have finished function. It will give me error if something was wrong or it will say data saved if everything was fine. And the last line there, the, the button. The, the reference, again, it points to all the scores. And we have a, a, a listener called once. And it will listen. Um, it will fire, if there's a change in the value, it will fire db change data. It was changed in the database. And again, it will give us 
if there's an error, it, I would like to see that. The, the ones I can change into on, so it's like an on command, like an event ls log, right? So this line, it will uh, add an event list. So every time a value is changed, every time, it will fire db change function. But I, I want it only to fire once, so I'll change it back to once. So we'll listen, and I will fire the function db change once, which is up here. And it will be sent with an argument, data, and that is the entire database from the online database. I want to find the highest score among all the scores, so I have a global variable called high scores, and I'll set it to zero, and I'll loop through all the scores and see which is the highest one. So I'll make a, another variable called scores. It takes the data that was given to us, and then all the values, this argument, uh, val, star parentheses, and parentheses, will take everything, all the values. And the keys are all the IDs, the unique IDs for each entry. So these are the keys over there. <clears throat> so now I'll take the keys so I can open up all the entries. So the you take the object, capital O, and the scores there are all the values uh, of the database and we take out all the keys. So now I have an array of keys. So uh, now in the console I would like to see that I'm looping through all the data and uh, I'll make a for loop y equals zero y is less than keys dot length that was the uh, array of the keys y plus plus and then I have a second variable called keys which is the key on the zero first second so forth position and the next variable called points it takes the scores which is all the data and it will look at the key that I'm looking at now zero one two three and it will look at the total within that key so in the first one the total is 47 and it will look through all of them and look at 77 and 20 and so forth <clears throat> so um, I would like to see the score <laughs> we just saw them before I'll console lock the score out and it will give us all the points in the database and if the points is higher than the high score then we got a new high score and the winner will be uh, the, the, in the scores with that key that we're looking at now will go and it will fetch the name and nothing is fancy because the name is all, <laughs> it's the same for all of them, it says all so I'm the winner always <laughs> which is fine, this is fine um, and now at the end in our button I had this text inside, I showed it before, it's over there and I'll put text inside there, we'll say uh, we want the high score to be the high score <laughs> and it was it will give us the winner there that was defined, it was global variable and, uh, and then it will, if we have an error we, uh, the error data function will fire and the console log will say uh, error getting data from database, it was from below there ERR data so um, it will it will fire this function up there if something is wrong and that is good uh, I should not try to manipulate data like the high score before I'm 100% sure that I have received the data from the database I have now shown you how to set up the database, how to is store data in the database and how to get it back in animate cc using the database called firebase happy coding out there